let's uh, begin this particular class uh, which is data wrangling so i hope you guys are aware about this uh, uh, term wrangling right so i guess uh, i i wouldn't go into the terminology but i think uh, you can uh, google yourself uh, right what does wrangle mean so essentially it's just uh, toying with data playing around with uh, stuff here and there and try to see uh, if we can come out come up with any meaningful insights right so that is what uh, <clears throat> we, we we mean when we say data wrangling right so uh, it's is just a, a, a fancy term but uh, essentially what we want to do we want to uh, explore the data a bit right uh, find out meaningful information and uh, come up with very good insights and recommendations based on that right so uh, firstly let's talk about the merge operation in pandas so we can merge data frames using the following methods one is of course your uh, concat operation and the other is merge right so we'll uh, see what are the differences between these two uh, set of uh, merge operations and uh, and then we'll talk about the group by okay so if you want to have a a detailed understanding or if you want to consult the official documentation so here is the link so you can uh, explore this particular link and uh, learn about various ways of merging right so of course <clears throat> we'll start with the uh, two basic and the most fundamental import statements the first one is where we are importing pandas and numpy right so this uh, should always be present in your notebook by default right so let's see even if you don't know anything at all right at least you should write these two things uh, because that is how you are going to uh, play around with the data right so let's go ahead uh, so i think my drive is already mounted so i can uh, read this file using this uh, particular command right pd.read csv so read csv is a very important uh, function available in pandas through which we can read any file located in a particular folder right so so i think you are already aware how this uh, data looks like but anyway i'll just uh, try to yeah, show you again okay so this is what we have been delivering so every observation has a lot of information about a particular movie right so i think uh, uh, you already are familiar with this so the first thing is uh, because in our data set we had uh, wait a bit right so yeah so in our data set we had this column id uh, which we don't want so firstly what we'll do we'll drop this id column okay so it's uh, very simple so you'll use the drop keyword or in fact the drop uh, method so how do you write this so you write the name of the data frame then you write dot and then the drop keyword and then uh, you write the column which you want to drop uh, let's say if you wanted to drop multiple columns so you'll need to provide them in a list okay and then we are providing axis is equal to one so <clears throat> and then uh, we're providing in place is equal to true so you know what in place does so it, it invokes the change or uh, this particular uh, yeah change in your data frame in place okay so we don't have to write anything as imdb df is equal to imdb df dot drop something like that right so this is a really handy uh, argument which you'll find in most of the functions in which uh, especially those methods which cause some change in your uh, data frame okay so as you know data frames are uh, mutable objects right so they are subject to change uh, let me just uh, stop sharing the sound oh, sorry about this um, wait a second okay so <clears throat> let's go ahead and yeah run this particular cell so I think yeah, I already run this. So uh, whenever let's say this column is already dropped, and if you try to run this again, so it will uh, throw you this error that this ID not found in Access because it does not all it doesn't exist. Okay, so we can ignore this for now. And I would encourage everyone to yeah just create a, a copy of this notebook and uh, try running the codes um, along with me so that you are uh, better able to visualize what's happening. Okay. So firstly, what we'll do, we'll try to create three subsets of our original data set. And here we'll create three subsets using uh, conditions on uh, a particular column, which is runtime. And I think you are already aware that runtime is nothing but the movie length. All right. So my first data frame, 
or the subset data frame I should call. Okay, so this is uh, all the observations for which this variable is taking a value greater than or equal to 150. Right, so you might have let's say 3,000. So we know that we have 3,000 rows in our uh, data frame in this particular IMDb DF, and uh, there would be some uh, observations, maybe a thousand or two thousand of them, for which uh, this particular variable is taking a value greater than or equal to 150. Right, so all uh, run times greater than or equal to uh, 150 will get uh, stored in this uh, data frame, which is IMDb one, and then you have another data frame uh, so imdb2 so here what i'm doing so i am uh, only focusing on those movies whose run time is either less than is less than 150 and greater than 100 okay so they are between 100 and 150 right so something like around on an average around 2 hours something like that and then i'm creating a third data frame in which the run time of the movies uh, are um, yeah less than uh, equal to 100 okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and now we can explore uh, <clears throat> imdb1 so let's see so it's essentially is the same set of things and uh, okay so imdb2 so it will have run times between 100 and 150 so as you can see so 130 105 122 118 119 and then we have imdb3. Uh, yeah, this particular data frame in which we have uh, those movies for which the runtime is less than 100 or equal to 100, right? That is how we have uh, divided our uh, original data frame into three uh, disjoint uh, data frames. Okay, so so the first important um, uh, merge operation is uh, using the concat uh, method. So how do you uh, yeah concat? Let's say three. Uh, data frames so there are two ways to concat either what you can do because these are uh, data frames uh, which have the same number of columns right so what you can do you can uh, stack them uh, row wise as in you can uh, have the uh, imdb1 and then below that you have, can have imdb2 and then below that you can have imdb3 right so here we are sort of uh, stacking row wise okay and then there is another uh, way in which we can uh, um, concat uh, our data frames, but they can be done, uh, let's say column wise, right? So you have this particular data frame and then you can place them side by side, okay? So this is another way where uh, we'll see how we can, which axis would we need to use, okay? So here, of course, I'm not defining which axis, but let's see uh, what this gives us, right? So here, a very important thing is, so of course, a PD keyword and then dot concat and within the parenthesis, you provide the list of data frames which you want to concat, right? So of course, you don't want to concat a single data frame, right? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. But of course, uh, when you talk about concat operation, you'll at least work with two data frames. And in, uh, you, in, uh, in a lot of uh, cases, so for example, let's say there could be uh, in a folder uh, multiple uh, text files or csv files right so there could be 100 of them and you want to read them uh, let's say using a for loop and you want them to uh, stack them uh, one uh, below the another and uh, so that you can have a consolidated data frame right so in those scenarios yeah it will become really helpful right it will be really helpful so you can simply just pass that list of uh, data frames which you want to concat right so here this will get concatenated row wise right essentially you are appending one below the another okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and now as you can see the, the shape of this particular uh, data frame is 2998 rows uh, and 22 columns okay so if you're not aware so uh, let's go ahead and check the shape of uh, all the subset uh, sub data frames which we had cre created so imdb3 dot shape and then of course uh, okay so this is 135 this is 1586 so this will be around 1700 uh, so uh, 1721 and then uh, this is 1277 so that uh, sums up to 2998 okay i do imdbdf dot info right so it it will give me information about how many uh, right so in, in runtime Right, so you have uh, two null uh, row, uh, 
two observations which have null values for this particular variable right so those are not uh, getting picked whenever we are doing this subset operation okay yeah this one right so here those particular null values are not getting subsetted okay so those observations essentially left out okay so <clears throat> okay all right so so as you can see so if when we did simply maybe i can just uh, yeah remove these lines uh, in fact yeah let's keep them so pd dot concat so when we pass this list of data frames so essentially these are the list of data frames which we want to concatenate let's say one below the another or row wise okay so they are just getting stacked uh, below one another and uh, as you can see the number of columns is the same okay so this is uh, how we can do the uh, concat operation of course you'll need to let's say you you, you wanted to store this in uh, some other data frame so you can provide that name and store that okay so something like let's say imdb uh, non null let's say uh, run time something like this okay so this uh, you can create this data frame and then uh, maybe let's say if you want to work with only this particular data frame you can go ahead and yeah start working on it Right, so this is uh, the first uh, instance of uh, concat uh, operation. Let's uh, go ahead and let's see. Can we, in fact, uh, do this concat operation column wise? Okay. So here, uh, what I'm doing. So I'm writing pd dot concat, and let's say I want to uh, don't I don't want to have uh, three data frames. Of course, I can have I can write it here because I have imdb three. But just for demonstration purpose. here i am passing uh, in this list two data frames right so this is essentially in the concat uh, the first argument will be your list of data frames and the second would be your axis is axis okay so here if you define axis is equal to 1 okay so let's see what this gives us okay so now if you see that we have 1721 rows and 44 columns okay so uh, i can tell you right so i am so we are only dealing with i am db1 and i am db2 in this particular concat operation so let me show you right so these are the, uh, the this is the shape okay of these two data frames which are concatenating and as you can see here we have 1721 rows and 44 columns so you can see so 135 plus 1586 right so how much uh, does it uh, come out to be so this this is equivalent to 1721 okay so now let's see uh, what is the data frame that we are getting after uh, doing this particular concat operation so as you can see here we just have the null values okay now let's see uh, so here also right so the column names are essentially the same so maybe let's let's try to store this in a particular uh, data frame so maybe let's say sample df sample df let's try to store this uh, particular thing uh, all right okay now sample df dot columns right so you remember the columns attribute which gives us the list of columns right so as you can see so belongs to collection so we we have a duplicate column names here right so uh, this is possible uh, but uh, this doesn't make that much sense right just concatenating these two data frames side by side right but just wanted to demonstrate that if you concatenate them along the axis one okay so we'll be getting uh, this particular data frame okay and uh, let's explore this a bit so sample df maybe i'll just go with the tail okay so as you can see so here we have the null values right but uh, we have uh but we have the values for the last 22 columns right so so maybe we can also have a look at let's say sample df dot info so you be able to relate what's happening here right so here as you can see so here in budget we have 135 non null values right so how these values are coming so these values are coming from this imdb1 right so imdb1 uh 135 right so so they are coming from uh, this particular data frame uh, imdb1 and then uh, 
if we talk about 1586 so these uh, variables so let's look at for this one genres okay so we have another duplicate column genres so here uh, the rest are coming from this particular data frame 1584 and of course they have different uh, row indices or row numbers so that's why uh, uh, we are seeing this particular data frame right so i hope you guys are able to understand what happened in this particular concat operation uh, can you please let me know over the chat if you're able to understand what's happening here so essentially when we're trying to concatenate them uh, along the axis one okay so uh, our imdb one uh, has around 135 or 34 rows okay so they have another some uh, row indices okay now our imdb two they have some different row indices so essentially if you talk about the uh, from the perspective of the entire data frame so let's say imdb1 is this chunk and the imdb2 is this chunk okay so of course they have different row indices but because we have asked the uh, pandas to perform the concatenation ax along the axis one okay so what it does it not only uh, adds the rows together but also creates uh, duplicate columns right because all both these data frames uh, they have uh, duplicate. Uh, they have the same number of columns, right? So, of course, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense to perform the concat operation along the axis one. But this will become really handy. Let's say if you have to, if you have a data frame with a uh, let's say same number of rows, maybe let's say thousand number of rows, right? So you have this data frame in which we have uh, ten columns. Okay. Now we have another data frame in which you have the thousand rows only but you have let's say some five new columns right which are not present here in your first data frame right so you can concatenate them uh, along the axis as in call uh, along the columns and uh, <clears throat> yeah so that will be a meaningful concat operation because uh, to the first data frame which just has uh, 10 columns you're adding five more columns and because let's say uh, and this concat operation uh, will be done based on the indices only right so it will check the indices for both the data frames and then concat them together okay so i hope yeah you guys are able to understand uh, how this particular concat operation is uh, happening all right okay so rishabh is asking so depending on the size of row and call we can go for axis accordingly right so Essentially, this will be a very easy question for you to answer when you actually do work on real world data sets. So most of the time, uh, I'll tell you when I have used concat a lot, right? So uh, there was a, a situation in which uh, there were around thousand text files. Okay, I had to read essentially. So uh, of course, in using the read CSV, what you do, you read a single file, but let's say I have all these small uh, thousand text files and I want to read them, uh, in, let's say in a loop, and then uh, concat them together, uh, or uh, yeah, to have a con consolidated data frame. So there it would make much sense, right? Because if all these individual text files, they have the same number of columns, okay? So I can simply append them row-wise, and uh, yeah, that will give me the consolidated data frame. But let's say uh, when you are doing a, let's say machine learning model prediction. So I'll just try to give you a, a sense of uh, how things look like when you do actual ML. So maybe let's say you have this data frame in which, uh, don't worry about the jargon which I'll be talking here. Just try to understand what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's say, so this is what we call, let's say our independent data. Okay, independent data set. Okay, so these are essentially columns and these are of course rows, you are already know and so with machine learning what we have so we essentially try to model a dependent variable so this is what we'll call a dv uh, don't worry about this so this uh, this particular dv can take some values uh, depending upon whether it's a regression task or a classification task uh, but uh, yeah so let's say this is just a column which has some numbers and then using the machine learning model what you will do you will come up with the same number. So for each observation, you will come up with a predict, predicted value of this DV. Okay, so this is your DV and this is what we are trying to model in machine learning. So using any algorithm, let's say linear regression or logistic regression or maybe any complex ML algorithm, 
what you will try to do you will try to come up with a uh, predict uh, predictions okay so for each row you will have a prediction okay so of course uh, this uh, when you run the uh, let's say when you generate the prediction so that will essentially be a series okay so what uh, you can do uh, so essentially let's say you want to see how your predictions work uh, with as compared to your dependent variable so you can concatenate uh, let's say these two together or maybe you can concatenate these three together because these these will have the same row indices so it makes sense to concatenate them column wise and then you can do a lot of analysis on top of it right so you can explore certain segments of your data maybe let's say this particular chunk so that and see how their predictions look like and maybe you can look at different other uh, subsets of the data and see how the predictions look like for them right so in this case when you have a predict, predict, prediction series and you have your let's say independent data set and your dependent variables so you can concatenate them along the uh, um, alongside each other right that means column wise okay but let's say when uh, you want to read a lot of uh, small files together so you can use the uh, concat thing right so what you will do essentially how do you do that so of course in the uh, concat operation we are passing a list of uh, data frames right so essentially in that case let's say you have this uh, huge list of files so maybe let's say you can uh, write something like for file under name in let's say wherever this is okay create a list so let, maybe what you can do you can create a list of dfs here so this will you will initialize this and then so here you will have let's say df is equal to pd dot read csv and then you will provide the path for that okay something like path of the folder where all the files are present okay and once you do that so what you can do so here then in your list of dfs you can append your df okay so once uh, this for loop uh, has run okay so your list of dfs will have the uh, will have uh, all those data frames in it right so all those small text files so once you have this list of dfs and you want to just create a consolidated data frame so you can just pass list of dfs here okay so something like uh, uh, yeah maybe i will just call that uh, sorry yeah. so i can call that consolidated df is equal to and then uh, what i can write so i can write pd dot concat and then uh, I can simply uh, pass list of DFs, right? So this is essentially a list, right? So I don't even need to provide the square brackets and everything, right? So this is essentially what we want to pass in the concat uh, method, uh, the list of data frames, right? And then of course, you don't even need to provide the access because you know that you want to uh, append all these data frames row wise, okay? So I hope, yeah, you guys are able to make sense of what, uh, how, where we can use uh, these particular let's say concat operations let's say access zero and access one right so does that answer your question Risha? Uh, did you get uh, a feel of where we can use uh, concat operations but of course uh, it's not limited to only these use cases but this is what uh, this came on uh, yeah, top of my mind okay all right so let's move ahead <clears throat> so this is the concat operation uh, now let's talk about a merge operation especially okay so a concat is one uh, way of merging uh, data frames but uh, uh, there is a specific word which is merge or the merge method in uh, pandas which helps us to do some joins okay so let's see what are joins so if you are uh, familiar with the Venn diagrams, I think it will be very uh, helpful for you to understand. So let's say I have two data frames, right? So which are denoted by uh, circles here, right? So let's say if I want to do a left join. So in left join, you will have all the rows uh, in your left data frame, uh, but uh, it will not have all the rows of your right data frame, right? So it will have at least all the rows of your left data frame, right? So I, I think uh, I should not explain this in theory. Maybe let's work out some examples and then things will become more clear to you. And you can actually see the data frame and uh, see these joins in action. So let's do that first, okay? So I, I am here creating two data frames which I want to join, okay? 
so one data frame is english movies okay so i am uh, creating a sub data frame which i am calling as english movies uh, whose original language is english okay so this is one data frame and then i am creating another data frame uh, in which uh, i have the runtime greater than 100 or equal to 100 greater than equal to 100 right and here i'm only picking one column which is imdb id right so i guess you guys must be able to understand uh, in these two data frames we have uh, this column which is imdb id which will be used uh, in joining these two data frames right so in concat we did not use any particular column to concatenate or merge our data frames so there the merge operation is happening using uh, the index labels right or in the indices but here uh, when we do when we use the merge method so we'll need a column on which to merge right so our uh, left data frame uh, will have a column right uh, and then our right data frame will have uh, some set of columns and a particular column and these two columns should be similar uh, same right so in our english movies we have this uh, column imdb id and then in long movies uh, this particular data frame so we have this imdb id as well okay so because here i am uh, subsetting this on only on rows in this particular uh, case the part which is highlighted here so it considers all the columns right and because english movies has all the columns uh, apart from I imdb id so in long movies i don't want to have all those columns so i just want to have this particular column on the basis of which we can join these two data frames okay okay so i'll just keep this particular column so that i can join the long movies with english movies and here we'll see how the left join outer join inner join all sort of joins work okay so let's go ahead and run this particular cell okay and now we can uh, check out the shape of these two data frames so english movies has the shape 2575 uh, observations and 22 uh, columns and then long movies is nothing but a, se a series essentially whose uh, shape is uh, so it has around 1820 observations and this is just one column right so that's why uh, we are not seeing one here right that means uh, it's one okay so it's essentially a series in a way okay so but of course uh, <clears throat> Uh, if you check out the type okay so, so this is a series okay so of course we can merge uh, data frames and series together because essentially data frame is nothing but it's a composition or constitution of uh, different series only right so i hope yeah this makes sense so in our english movies we have 2500 observations around and then in long movies we have around 1800 observations okay so now let's uh, try to do uh, do inner join first uh, so how do we do that and how do we write a, such a uh, inner join or merge operation so firstly i'll uh, write the name of the variable in which i want to store that merged uh, data frame okay so i'm writing merged ijdf right so ij is short for inner join okay and now how you actually write the merge operation so you write pd right which is the short for pandas and then you have this merge method right so you write this word merge and if you hover over this so you'll get a lot of information about this right okay so now i need to provide two data frames which i want to merge right so uh, on the left i'll have english movies and on the right i'll have long movies okay and uh, and how am i going to join so there is a key uh, argument which is how right so this defines the type of join you want to have so this is inner join right so because i want to do inner join here the definition of inner join will become really clear uh, firstly yeah you need to first uh, uh, keep this in mind that english movies have these many observations and long movies have these many observations right and when we are trying to do inner join so here we'll have the common set of observations right so there would be some observations 
which are uh, let's say there are some observations in long movies which are not present here and there would be some observations in english movies which are not part which are not part of your long movies database okay so so firstly what we will do we'll provide the, uh, the two data frames which you, which we want to merge okay then uh, we'll provide uh, how we want to merge these two right so we'll write this argument how and then we'll provide inner within quotes right so this will specify inner join and then there are uh, additional options so on which column you want to join right this is really important because you need to specify on which column you want to join right so of course uh, the two columns which are the common one right the common columns in these two data frames on the basis of which uh, them only we can uh, do such join right so we are not relying on the indices or anything as such we are relying on these uh, columns okay so uh, so there is a uh, argument which is left on so as in which column of the left data frame we, we want to do the join right so in english movies i have this imdb id okay which i am providing as a string and then there is a write on which specifies which column of the right data frame you want to join on right so for long movies we have the imdb id so i'll provide imdb id here okay and yeah so that is it so right this is a a very yeah straightforward merge statement uh, in which we are doing inner join right so let's go ahead and run this particular uh, piece of code okay so we have run it now let's explore our data frame right so merge ig uh, ij df df right so here we have 15 28 rows and uh, 22 columns right so remember uh, here we had 2575 2575 rows in english and then in long movies we had 18 20 right so only uh, around 15 28 rows are there uh, which are part of these two data frames what we can do here uh, is uh, i'm just uh, uh, thinking out of the box so maybe so let's say uh, temp df okay something like this so temp df so imdb df so here in imdb df so i can provide two conditions imdb df right so let's say original language is uh, sorry yeah so this is not only english but it is also the run time is also greater than equal to 100 so let's see what uh, okay so let's go ahead and run this right so we are getting 1528 observations right so essentially when we did the uh, join so we were doing this particular thing right but now you will ask me if we can um, get our uh, required data frame using this particular uh, subsetting right so why do we even need to join right so the idea is i, I was just trying to give you a demonstration of how uh, joins work in pandas and in fact in general how joins work but of course Uh, there will be times so what you will be dealing with so you will have one data frame in which you have this uh, column which uh, you will use to join right so that particular data frame will have some uh, features or some variables right maybe let's say 10 variables okay now you will have another data frame in which you will have uh, that particular column on which you can join those two but you will have other set of information right so other set of variables you will have and then when you do the inner join so or maybe any sort of join so you can uh, get the combined information for both those two right so uh, most of the time what will happen that depending upon the business use case and uh, how you are uh, collecting the information so some information will reside in some particular table and uh, or some files and some other uh, set of piece information will reside in some other data frame okay and let's say if you have a common column on which to join so you can merge these two files or uh, data sets together to get a consolidated uh, data frame right so that will have all the variables you, uh, that you are collecting information about okay <clears throat> so uh, is inner join clear to you guys <clears throat> all right so i think yeah 
uh, yeah, this should not be that difficult to comprehend. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, do another set of join. Right, so so Sheets is asking it happens only on two data frames. So of course, uh, yes, two data frames here. And let's see if we want, if we have a third data frame. So you can merge these two first together, and then you can merge uh, with the resultant here. Okay, Sheets. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay, so let's uh, look at another join, which is left join. So here, everything is essentially the same. Only the how uh, argument, uh, what uh, that keyword will, this particular value, which will be provided in the how argument will change, right? So earlier we we're providing inner. Now we want to do a left join. So we'll provide left, okay? So what left will do, that it will keep all the observations uh, in your left data frame. Right, so it will have all the observations in your English movie uh, from English movies. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and uh, check this particular data frame. So now, as you can see, it has 25, 75 uh, rows, which is essentially the same number of rows we had in uh, <clears throat> where we had so in our English movies. Right, so all the rows of your left data frame when you are doing and doing a left join, they will be intact and uh, <clears throat> for uh, those observations for which uh, uh, there is no information about long values, okay? So I think, yeah, those will be, uh, yeah. So those will, uh, yeah, not matter here because of course, uh, okay, so I'm getting some questions here. Uh, so can we give two different columns for left on and right on arguments to, in merge right so the name of the columns in these two data frames can be different but the values they take they should be the uh, same right so essentially your joining is happening on those specific keys right so imdb id if you think about it so where is it right so let's say if this particular id is also present let's say in, in your english movies and this particular id is also present in your um, long movies then only this merge will uh, be able to take place right so because you need a, uh, the column names can be different, but, but the values should be uh, same, right? At least uh, for the observations which you want, right? So yeah, I hope you, so, so the idea of uh, joining is you're joining a specific, uh, value right so if this particular let's say when we're doing inner join right so when we're doing inner join so let's say this value should be present in your uh, english movies and also in your long movies then only this will be part of the resultant or this let's say merged ijdf okay so you need to have common uh, key values on which to merge okay so let's say even if you have uh, common column names but they have different let's say in your English movies, you have the column name, let's say IMDB ID. And then in long movies also, you have this column name IMDB ID. But let's say none of the values of the IMDB are same uh, in your English and your long movies, right? So when you do the inner join, the resultant DF will be uh, a null data frame, right? So you wouldn't have any observations there, right? So essentially what you are doing, saying that uh, will be merging on the values of these two columns, right? So which is uh, available from this IMDB ID, right? So that's why we need to specify on which columns we want to join, essentially uh, the values of those columns, okay? So I hope you guys get the idea. <clears throat> okay. So let's move ahead, okay? So this is how the left join will work, right? So left in left join, we'll have all the rows, uh, from your uh, English movies data frame, right? So because that is on the left hand side, right? So it will have all the observations from your English movies and uh, it will not have uh, those observations which, which are less apart, not part of the English movies. Okay. Uh, now let's say if you want to do a right join, so here we'll have all the observations from long movies uh, and only those, uh, right? And <clears throat> 
so let's go ahead and run this right so here also so we have 1820 rows right so let me just check uh, the shape right so long movies 1820 right so that's the shape of the resultant data frame when we try to do right join right so it will have all the observations from the long movies so let's say uh, in english movies we had uh, different columns uh, apart from imdb id and then in long movies as well we had uh, some different columns uh, and this imdb id right so assume that imdb id is the only common column across these two data frames so uh, when you are let's say doing a uh, right join in this case so the columns for which uh, so the columns for which uh, the imdb id is not the same uh, or sorry the observations for which the imdb id is not the same for english movies and long movies so what will happen so you of course have the uh, values for uh, those observations from your long movies but uh, if you talk about uh, the columns for uh, english movies so those will be nulls okay because you uh, that imdb id let's say is not part of that english movie right so there in that particular row so you will uh, of course the columns which are present in long movies so those will have values right because essentially we are doing right join but uh, in english movies so those observations which uh, do not share the common imdb id so the columns for uh, english movies uh, those values will not be present okay they will be essentially nulls okay because you don't have information about that right so let's say uh, let's talk about a single row okay so so this is a single row and let's say this is the imdb id which is let's say one okay and then you have this bunch of columns in your let's say long movies right so this is the long movies and then uh, you have another observation which is let's say this is the uh, IM, uh, imdb id 2 which is from the english movies and here you have some different set of columns so let's say these are call 1 call 2 something like this and these are let's say call 10 call 11 something like this right so these columns are different from th these ones okay so when you were trying to do right join so because the imdb id is not the same here so what will happen in your resultant data frame so your resultant data frame will be something like this so of course one will be here because we are doing a right join here you will have of course the columns from uh, long movies so these are long movies column and then of course you will have the column for uh, english movies as well so this is english movies so these are the columns which are coming from english movies but these will be nulls right so these will be nas right because there exists no record in your english movies where the imdb id is one right so these values will be nulls okay so this is what i uh, what happens when we talk about right join right so uh, it will show you all the rows uh, in your right data frame but let's say for uh, the left data frame if there are no observations for those specific imdb ids so those will just have the null values so are you guys able to comprehend uh, how left join or right join works uh, okay uh, okay if i once i get the confirmation so i'll i'll just move ahead okay so yeah most of you are able to understand how left join and right join are able uh, yeah are working right and then of course so smoothie is asking can we give multiple columns instead of a single column from both sides based on which we can of course definitely so there what do you can do so here you will need to provide the list of columns in on which you want to join right so it could be something else it could be something right so you can have multiple columns on which you can join right so does that answer your question smoothie okay all right so what if the conflict so so what will happen to column if there are different columns in both the data frames right so all those columns will be present in your resultant data frame but i am asking about what will be the values for those columns right so let's say english movies is your left data frame and long movies is your right data frame right and now you are doing a right join okay 
so of course you will have all the observations and the uh, column values for your long movies in your resultant data frame but what about the column values for uh, columns which are present in let's say english movies right so if that particular imdb id is not present in english movies so those columns will still be part of the resultant data frame but those values will be nulls because there is no such record in your english movies data frame in which you have that imdb id right so you don't have that imdb id so you don't have the values for those columns which are coming from your english movie right does that make sense rajat yeah does it make sense okay that's great all right so let's move ahead and then we can talk about the last joint which which is outer joint so let's go ahead and do this and here uh, of course you can provide left on right on but of course it's the same uh, uh, column name so we can simply write on right on in fact uh, as you can see in merge so you want you have on let's say you can use on if you have the same column names but uh, it's better to use left on and right on if uh, if if the column names are different in the two data frames okay so but here uh, because the column name is same on which we want to join so we'll use just on not left on and right on of course we can write that but it will be extra uh, step because uh, we know that yeah the column name is the same uh, in these two data frames right so and how we want to join so we want to do it do a outer join okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and uh, you can see this merged oj df right so what will be the shape of this so this will be 2867 okay and let's check the shape of uh, the original uh, yeah two data frames 25751820 right so i think there are around 300 uh, extra movies which are not part of english movies but they are present in long movies so that's why when we are doing uh, outer join so uh, we are getting 2867 rows okay so now let's get, get back to our uh, diagram right so uh, consider this as english movies and maybe i can use the spotlight okay so this is let's say this is your uh, english movies and this is your long movies right same is the case for all the other type of joints so your left data frame is your english movies and this is your uh, long movies right so when we did inner join so we only got those rows which were common in both these data frames right as in which had the common set of imdb ids right so only those observations we are getting but when we are doing left join so we are getting all the observations which are present in your english movies when we are doing right join so we are getting those observations or those uh, imdb ids which are present in your long movies right and then uh, we can do the full outer join right so we did the full outer join so it will have all the imdb ids present in uh, both the data frames right so does this uh, venn diagram uh, make sense to you guys right yeah so essentially yeah so the whole idea of understanding pandas is the best way to learn these things is to experiment on your own right so my job is to uh, give you the intuition uh, acquaint you with the major concepts but eventually you will have to do, conduct all those experiments in this uh, collab playground right so once you do that the yeah, things will become pretty straight forward and clear to you right so this is not that difficult concept to understand but uh, here uh, if you just look at this particular venn diagram it will make sense to you right so consider this as your english movies and this is the long movies so inner join will only have those observations which uh, which are let's say it will have only those observations which are common in both these data frames right in left join will have all those observations which are just uh, present in your uh, left data frame and of course uh, i'm talking about the rows here and the columns will still be present from the other data frame of course they, they can take null values if they are uh, uh, if any such record does not exist let's say when you're talking about left joint 
so consider a case uh, where uh, this is uh, there is a particular imdb id in your long movies which is not present in your english movies right and we are try do, trying to do the left join and let's say you have some different columns present in your long movies so those columns will indeed be part of your resultant data frame but those columns will have null values for those set of imdb ids which are not uh, present in your english movies but are present in your long movies right so i know that was a convoluted statement but i hope you guys understand that particular bit okay okay so let's move ahead so we learned about joins and now we are ready to move forward okay so let's do some group by operations okay so here uh, i'll be using uh, the date time operations and functionalities so that's why i'm importing these two uh, we did this particular uh, uh, yeah ran these statements uh, yesterday as well when we were talking about date time operations so now what i want to do i want to first create a new release date with a proper format i want to have that uh, have a column which will be uh, essentially date time right of course you can override this particular column uh, by just mentioning this but i would just want to have a new column okay so we can tr uh, keep track of uh, any such changes okay so here of course i am using i am applying uh, this particular operation which is date time dot strp time remember strp time so this is uh, essentially parsing our string to a date time uh, object or date time type okay so sumanta is asking when we are doing right join then there will be only one column as there is only one column in long movie okay so let's uh, yeah just go back a bit uh, i'll try to yeah make this a bit in interesting for you if you're not able to comprehend so let's say here i don't i will not keep imdb id but i'll just uh, keep let's say original language as well okay so let's see how this works so i'll just create this data frame okay so okay just give me a second okay so i can pass this list here so i can use the lock operation and i can pass this list here okay <clears throat> okay now if we can check the shape so now we have at least uh, yeah two columns here in our long movies okay so now let's uh, let let's go ahead and uh, try to run this particular let's say left join okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and run this okay so so now as you can see we have 23 columns right so earlier when we were doing uh, we we had around 22 columns right so so this is so as you can see because this particular column name original language it was present in both your english movies and the long movies so now you will see two columns so here it says underscore x and then here it will say underscore y right and as you can see here uh, for this row or for this particular imdb id so this is not present in your uh, in your in, uh, long movies so that's why for this particular value we are getting as null right so does that make sense uh, sumanta does this make sense why are we seeing any and here because for this particular obs uh, observation this uh, the imdb id is not present in your long movies right but of course it will uh, add that column but the value will be null right but but for other set of imdb ids which are present uh, in long movies with respect to let's say english movies so th these will have values but as you can see some will have null values right so essentially what this means that for these observations uh, your uh, the imdb id is not present in your long movies but of course they are present in your english movies right okay that's great okay i think i should have done this earlier but uh, i was hoping yeah, you guys would understand but uh, nonetheless yeah you understood it now so right so, so smoothie saying that so merge is simply a method to filter out 
some observations while keeping all the columns in both data frames in fact right so we can decide which columns we want to keep right so here when we when you are doing the merge operation right so here i can specify the list of columns i want let's say i want here imdb id only and here i want let's say uh, run time okay I, I just want these two things and in long movies of course i have imdb id and the original uh language okay so let's try to run this particular bit okay and uh, let's see what this gives so now this will give us a data frame with three columns only because imdb id is common in both of these uh, data frame and run time is coming from here and now in long movies uh, we had just an extra column apart from imdb id which is original language right so as you can see so for these imdb ids run time which is coming from english movies so this uh, this data is not available because these imdbs are not part of your english movies but they are in fact uh, present in long movies so that's why you can see that these values are populated and they are not null but if we talk about these imdb ids so original language has null so that means these imdb ids are not present in your long movies but they are in fact present in your english movies right so i hope yeah this makes sense right right that's great okay so it depends upon you at least you should have uh, the column on which to join uh, they should be present in both uh, both your data frames right that is the only thing and of course uh, whatever columns you want to keep and uh, you want to discard that's upon you okay all right so let's move ahead now we want to do uh, interesting group by operation essentially what we mean by group by so uh, in our we have a relatively uh, big data set right it's not that big but of course we have 3000 operations uh, observations and there uh, what if you wanted to find out let's say the average run time across all the english across english movies what was the average run time or what was the average profit uh, for all the english movies right so if you want to do any such aggregate operation in which you want to have an aggregate statistic so, so let's do some group by operations so uh, so I, I think i have already imported this but anyway i'll run this again now i can cr uh, create a new column okay which is new release date which is in fact a better format of our original release date okay so here we are essentially parsing the string which is uh, the values in your uh, column release date and then parsing that those strings to a proper date time uh, object okay so let's go ahead and run this so <clears throat> if you see uh, okay so one more thing so yesterday we have discussed this so in from our new release date we can also extract the year of release okay so year of release will be imdb df new release date dot apply lambda and then x so x will nothing be the value taken uh, so for each row the value present in your column new release date and on that value we want to uh, yeah we want to call this attribute year because x will nothing be a daytime object and you can uh, call this attribute which is year and that will give you the year okay so let's go ahead and run this right so this will give me the year of release okay so now we can check right so here as you can see the year of release is uh yeah so so as you can see the year of release is uh, pretty much accurate here right but we have to be a bit careful okay so now uh, there is some issue with this particular operation so let's uh, find out all the unique year, years of release okay so let's do that and as you can see so there are some years which are 2045 2050 2063 2038 so essentially essentially what happened that uh, your original so this uh, this was something like uh, let's say uh, 94 or let's say 63 so that was essentially 1963 but when we uh, called this attribute here so it gave you 2063 rather than 1963 okay so i'll i have a hack around it how to yeah uh, resolve these discrepancies so in our so i'm updating my year of release right so this is the column which i have created 
and I'm using a functionality which is available from NumPy and there is a keyword or the method where, okay? So what I'm saying, so where the year of release is greater than 2020. So this is the condition in your where method. So wherever or whatever observation for which year of release is 2020, what we need to do, we'll uh, subtract 100 from them. So wherever this condition is getting fulfilled, uh, those values will be updated by this particular value, else uh, will not change the value at all, right? So here I'm not doing anything. I'm just writing IMDB uh, year of release, right? And I am yeah updating this in year of release. So let's go ahead and run this, okay? So, so now you can check uh, the unique values in your uh, year of release. So now it's 1963, 1938, right? So it looks better now, okay? So you always need to be very cautious about whatever operations you are doing, right? So sometimes due to some issues in your, uh, the type of data, you might not uh, be able to get the expected result. So you'll need to uh, check if actually makes sense, right? So uh, how, how would I have figured out if this particular operation, which is this year of release, if this uh, actually ran well, okay? So there was one way, so because there will be only finite years, so I could have called the uh, unique method, which I did, right? And it gave me the unique set of values. And I saw that yeah, there were some erroneous values, uh, which uh, crept in due to uh, the poor format, uh, which was present in our earlier data. So that's why this uh, yeah year attribute was not able to handle that, okay? So, but uh, we had a very easy way uh, around that. So we just needed to subtract 100 from them, okay? So I hope, yeah, that makes sense. So Sumanta so is saying, I'm a bit confused about Lambda function, what input it's taking. Okay, so no worries. I'll just yeah walk you through that. Okay, so this is the Lambda, right? So here, essentially what's happening, I'll tell you. So IMDB, DF, new release date. So essentially when we are using the apply method, so, so Lambda is nothing but a function. So this is a function essentially, right? And this function will be applied on all, all rows, okay? So let's say uh, we, we are applying this on new release date, okay? On new release date, okay? So this is our, so all set of uh, values in this particular column. So what apply method will do, especially the Lambda function in this case, because in apply method will pass a function, right? So that function will be applied to each of the values in your, uh, in this particular column on which we are applying, right? So here, now X will be a value, th this particular value, right? So for each row, X will take this value, right? And because new release date is a daytime object, okay? So now, in fact, you can uh, check the info. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and check the info, right? So new release date is a daytime object, right? And because this is a daytime object, okay? So this will support an attribute. So this will have an attribute year, right? So essentially what's happening uh, when uh, we're passing uh, this function in the apply method. So for each row, X will take this value. So this operation will get performed. So X dot year, so it will fetch 2015 and that will get stored in your year of release, right? So this operation will happen for all the rows in sequence. Okay, so it will happen for all the rows. When we say apply, especially uh, in this case, this is being applied along the axis one. That means uh, this particular operation or this particular function will be applied across all the rows for that uh, for this particular column, right? So here we have just one column, which is new release date. So for all the values, this particular operation will get uh, executed. Okay, so here we can have month. So we'll get, uh, so what you will get when you apply 2015, okay? So maybe, uh, let me, yeah, so what is this? So this is, right, so I can call it dot year. So what this will give me, this will give me 2015. So this is what we are get, uh, yeah, storing here, year of release. Essentially, this thing is happening using this uh, apply method for all the uh, rows, right? So this is happening for all such rows. So two, 
right so in this fashion it is uh, this particular operation is being applied across all the rows uh, does this make sense uh, snuti yeah okay that's great okay so what you can also do here so we can also do this without function uh, the lambda function so we can write uh, convert to year okay so what we'll do we can write convert to year and this will take a value so maybe let's say this will take a date uh, i think uh, I, um, let's say date uh, value i can write something like this uh, date value is yeah okay so now what i want to return i want to return date value dot year okay so i want to return this only so i don't even need to write lambda right so what i need to write so here i can simply i'll just run this okay i copy this function here and just paste this so essentially what i'm saying apply this function on all the values of this column okay so let's run this and because okay maybe i can add one another column to just to differentiate if this is working right so now i can check imdb df right so year of release one right so this is giving me the same value right so the idea of uh, using lambda is we we didn't have to write this particular thing right so we didn't have to define a function so that's why lambda is really helpful because lambda is an anonymous function so here we can just pass the expression and yeah that will do the job right but of course if you want to avoid the lambda function you can always do it in this particular way so here also when we when i calculated release date so what i can do i can write uh, uh parse string to date so this is my function name and this it takes a string as an input so let's say I, i'll write a string input or maybe date string so that means that makes more sense and what do i need to return so i need to return this particular expression okay so i need to return this okay and instead of x i'll have date string okay so let's go ahead and run this okay so now we can get rid of lambda function here at, totally so i'll just pass the function here so when i'm saying apply this function so that means this function will apply will get applied on all the values of this particular column and here you don't need to specify axis because you've already defined your column that means you want to uh, uh, perform this operation on all the values of this particular column right so here you you're not being ambiguous at all so maybe i can also create a new column not overwrite that because it can get overwritten so i'll create new release date one and just try to demonstrate you so if this works so i can yeah just imdb df okay so now as you can see here right yeah so i have new release date one right so are you able to understand why i chose to use lambda because i didn't have to write this function right so i i didn't i didn't want to write dev and then the function name and then all those return so because lambda was quite uh, yeah useful for me because i didn't have to define the function before that does that make sense okay so okay that's great so it's a it's a that's why lambda functions are really useful because you don't need to write a function beforehand and then pass that function as an argument in your apply method you can uh, you can write that function whatever op function operation you want to do eventually the purpose of writing a function is to apply this particular uh, transformation right and if you want to do that we can write this using lambda right x so x here what it takes so it takes a value for a uh, yeah it takes a value for this particular column for each observation right and then here uh, because x is that date time value so you can uh, yeah what you can do you can simply copy paste this particular expression okay and provide x here okay so i didn't uh, have to yeah bother about uh, writing a function beforehand right i can simply do this uh, in a quick way 
in fact a quicker way right but uh, yeah so lambda function can take a, as many arguments as you can have right so here let's say if i don't specify release date okay so i can do it another way so i don't specify the column here i specify the data frame here but because i'm applying this on data frame so this function can be applied along both the axes right zero or one so we need to specify in this particular case and also we need to specify on which column we want to do right so here x is essentially when we write in this particular fashion imdb df dot apply lambda x so x is essentially the entire observation right so here now we need to specify on which particular column uh, we want to yeah right uh, perform this operation so this is release date okay and uh, yeah and here you can specify your axis the axis is equal to 1 Okay, so let's go ahead and maybe create a new column IMDB, uh, yeah, new release date two. Okay, so now we can check, uh, maybe I will not print. Okay, one important thing I have not told you guys. So you should always print the head or maybe if you want to get the 10 rows, never write something like IMDB DF, right? Because here I'm dealing with small data set. So it makes sense, right? Because yeah, it will not uh, consume a lot of space. In fact, it will, if, but if you have a very large data frame, so always it's uh, better to check the head and uh, try to see if uh, you're able to create a new column in a in a better way, right? So here, as you can see, that new release date is exactly the same. So I hope you guys are able to understand uh, how uh, how lambda why lambda function is useful, right? So here, instead of writing all these things, I I just uh, yeah wrote that in this particular thing right so it's essentially the same expression which we want to or same operation we want to perform right exactly so here here also what you can do you can uh, you can return a function here as well right so here you can re return a function too uh, so maybe uh, let's say if i have if i had written a function maybe convert to here right so i can uh return this particular function here only right so that's why uh, in the last class in the lambda function we used uh, the our expression was in fact a function only right but that did not be the case always right it depends upon how you want to yeah yeah do that particular operation am i clear uh sumanta right so it is really important because lambda function takes only one expression as Rowan is saying, but it can take as many arguments uh, you want. Okay. So let's say our data frame uh, had around thousand columns, right? So here X can take those uh, thousand possible values, right? So, uh, so a lambda function can take as many arguments uh, as there are, but uh, it will just have one expression. Okay. So here we want to do a simple transformation. So that's why I went ahead with the Lambda function. But of course we can, if you are not very comfortable with using, uh, we are comfortable with using Lambda function, you can, you should definitely write a custom function beforehand and th then pass that function in your apply method. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So if you're confused about Lambda, you don't even have to use this, right? Always write a function and pass that function in your uh, apply method, okay? So I think, yeah, uh, you can stick with that particular uh, procedure for now uh, till you get comfortable with uh, the Lambda function. Okay, so Lambda is an anonymous function and uh, it's uh, quite handy at times. Okay. All right, so let's move ahead. I think, uh, yeah, we won't be able to cover uh, the problem statement which we wanted to do because it's already one and a half hours but uh, we'll try to do that in the guided project. So I'll walk you through different group by operations and we'll have a look at those and uh, we'll uh, yeah, disband the class there. Okay, so now we have fixed the year of release, right? Are you guys clear in this particular step uh, how this happened, right? How this np.where uh, worked, right? So here in np.where, first argument is essentially the condition. The second argument is the value of this particular column, if this condition is satisfied, 
or and this is the else part if the condition is not satisfied okay so are you guys with me at this point of time okay okay that's great so now if you check the unique values in your year of release so it's pretty consistent right here no 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 so here we have 2042 right so of course uh, let's just uh, run this particular bit again and then yeah this should be fine okay so now this is fine in fact you can find the max of it as well so right so year of release dot if i have max for this right so 2017 is the max okay and what is the min so 1921 okay so almost so this data set uh, has movies across a century essentially starting from 1921 uh, till 2017 okay so that is one bit of information we have gotten okay now what we so let's say let's define our first task uh, because we are talking about group, group by operations so we need to think of what aggregate uh, statistics we want okay so let's say i want to find out the maximum movie run time across different years so how can i do that okay so so what i'll do i'll write my uh, data frame firstly i'll write dot and then i'll write a, a keyword which is group by right so this is a group by method and now in this method we can specify the column on which we want to group so essentially uh, what we want in our output so in our output so we will we'll have the year okay so let's say this is 1921 and then you have a bunch of let's say 1980 and then you have let's say 2017 right and for these years we want to get the maximum run time right so this could be let's say 100 this could be something else right so based on all the movies which were released in 1921 and for this also it, it could be let's say 120 so depending upon how which movies uh, were released in 1980 okay so this is the aggregate operation we want to do here and so let's see how we can do that so it's pretty straightforward so what do you need to do so you need to write your data frame you need to write group by and then you need to write the column name right uh, on which you want to group by right so this is our group uh, as in different years will constitute a single group okay so 2013 is one group uh, 2014 is another group something like that and then what we want to do we want to provide this particular column uh, within the square brackets uh, because this is the column whose aggregate statistic we want right so for all these uh, different years what do we want we want the maximum of the movie run times or the movie lengths right so here here we have taken uh, care of the group okay now here we'll pass that variable uh, whose statistic we want to calculate or which we want to aggregate okay so this will be your run time and then uh, okay so this will be in square brackets here and then you can write dot and then you can call the max method okay so this will give you the max uh, <clears throat> essentially it will give you the maximum movie time across all these groups as in across all these years right so what was the maximum movie run time in year 2013 so it was 186 uh, minutes okay uh, so essentially um, just a, a bit uh, greater than three hours okay so here we have another so as you can see here it, this does not look like a data frame right so here what we can do we can write something like reset index we can write something like reset index okay after this we'll call this method on top of uh, max and this will give me a very good uh, data frame right so this is a data frame so whenever you're doing group by operations so this will not be a data frame okay uh, but if you just write dot reset index after that so it will yeah, show you the variable name and the runtime right and of course uh, in most uh, situations so this will not be just runtime because here we're taking the max so you can rename your column with max runtime okay 
So something like this, right? So here, here you can store this as let's say. So we can store this in max runtime movies by year. Okay, something like this. And uh, and we can do some changes here. So maybe let's say max runtime movies. So dot rename, and then uh, we can specify. Uh, which column we want to update so let's say runtime we want to change this to uh, max runtime okay and then we can write in place is equal to true so let's go ahead and yeah run this and now we can check our uh, movie uh, data frame so the head okay so now uh, uh, what happened so yeah this did not get updated uh, did i run this no i didn't run this no uh, let me just check okay uh, okay so in this case uh, i'll just rename column pandas so i'll just go here and see right so we need to do something like columns is equal to okay right yeah so I didn't specify columns is equal to, right? This was necessary, right? And now this should work definitely, right? So now this is updated, right? So uh, yeah, so this was a pretty petty thing, right? I forgot to write the columns keyword, but we know that, yeah, especially yeah, in this case, I knew that I, I can definitely rename the column. So uh, you can definitely Google that thing and see how quickly I was able to do it, right? So whenever you have any such confusion, but if you're aware that what you want to do, that's enough, right? So you can simply Google and yeah, just do your thing. Uh, no, it does not uh, change the original data frame. So let's say IMDB DF, right? So you can see, let's check the shape, right? So this is again, yeah, that's the old data, original data frame, okay? So are you guys able to understand this particular group by operation, how we are getting the max runtime for all the really years of release? Okay, okay, perfect. <coughs> so that's great. Uh, <clears throat> so we can do, uh, in fact, we can calculate a few more uh, aggregate statistics. So here now I want to count the number of movies each year, right? Which were released. So let's go ahead. So I can simply write imdb.count because I know that, yeah, uh, this is unique. So I can run this particular piece of code, right? And of course I can run reset index. Okay. So this is year of release. And then you can see, uh, yeah. So in 2013, we had 141 movies right and now on in this part on this particular group you can do a lot more analysis right so you can observe the trend as in the number of movies released uh, every year of course this is not the exhaustive set of movies this is just 3000 movies of course it's a sub a subset of a big data frame but let's say if you have a very large uh, data set with you which has around uh, over a million rows or more than that so there, these things will uh, be really important and you will want to explore the trends of uh, such statistics, right? For example, the number of, uh, how the number of movies ha have changed across years, right? So as you were talking about number of movies released in a year, right? So in which year we saw the highest number of movies and we can do some sort of, uh, yeah, uh, related analysis on top of that, okay? So, so this is the count, uh, Right? And then of course, you can find the average, you can write mean, something like this, or median, right? So mean is influenced by outlier, so we can write median, right? Something like this. So there are a lot of different, uh, sorry, uh, let's say uh, I wanted to get the max, uh, not the max runtime, but uh, in this case, uh, I'll just copy paste this particular code. Uh, Maybe I just move it a tad lower. Okay. So now let's say I wanted to find the median runtime. And I'll just not store this. I'll just try to yeah, execute this cell. 
okay so as you can see median run time is more or less the same uh, in the last four years okay <clears throat> okay so there is one more thing which we can do in group by so i have all these uh, yeah data frames maybe i can just yeah delete them okay so now this so let's say uh, what you want to do you want to perform a three or four or even multiple aggregations at once okay so let's say for a run time i don't only want to calculate the uh, average runtime for a particular year, right? But I also want to calculate the maximum runtime or the minimum runtime, right? Or the sum of all, all those runtimes. So we can, uh, what we can do, we can use the dot ag uh, method here, right? Which is short for aggregate. Okay, so how this works? So I'll just, yeah, show you this example. So suppose I want to group by on uh, two, uh, <clears throat> let's say on two columns. Right, so not only year of release, but the original language. Okay, so I am grouping by uh, grouping by on uh, these two columns. Right, so these are year of release and original language, and here I am providing an argument which is as index is equal to false. Okay, maybe you can provide true. So for now, I'll just keep it to false. You can explore what this means. The important point is here we'll provide dot add, and then we can here. Uh, provide all those things uh, which we want to do right so whatever operations or aggregate operations we want to perform we can uh, perform them here okay so let's say i want to calculate the uh, mean of the runtime okay and then let's say i want to calculate the sum of the revenue okay maybe also you would want something like let's say the count of movies so something like i can provide count okay so in the ag method the argument is a dictionary okay so the key of uh, each elements of this dictionary is the variable name whose aggregate uh, aggregate statistics you want and then you can provide that particular aggregation operation right so in this case i am providing mean then uh, for revenue this is the second element of our dictionary right so revenue is the key here and which is the column whose aggregation we want to do and then what aggregation we want to do we can provide it here in the value right so this is sum so and then here we can count the number of uh, movies for each group right so let's go ahead and run this right so as you can see so in 1921 for english movies uh, and we can also what we can do we can also sort values uh, let's say uh, sort values by uh, year of release. Okay. So and then okay, let's see if this works. Okay. So see, as you can see, in 1925 we have two original language. One was English, and another is Russian. So revenue is one. Of course, this is erroneous. Uh, there's some issue. But let's talk about 2017. So in 2017, we have Russian movies. We have English, we have Span Spanish, then French, and then I'm not sure which is this, but uh, uh, I think this should be Taiwanese or something like that. Uh, so now here, the runtime is nothing but the average runtime for this group, right? So average runtime for this group, right? So all Russian movies released in 2017. So this is a group. And what was what was the average runtime or the movie length? So that was 140 minutes. What was the total revenue? Because here we're doing sum. So of course the name of the column is revenue, but it is in fact the sum of all the revenue, uh, right? Revenues generated by all these movies, which were Russian and released in 2017. And then IMDb ID is essentially the count of movies, right? So it's just one. It's one only, right? But if you look at this particular observation. So this is uh, the group of all the English movies released in 2017. So what was the average runtime of all these movies? So 110. What was the total revenue generated by all these movies? So this is quite big. So this is thousand and this, this is million. So around seven, so yeah, more than 7 billion, right? So this is the total revenue generated by all these movies uh, in 
English movies especially in 2017. And how many movies were there? So there were 35 such movies, right? Because we're uh, in IMDb, ID, we have the count, right? So of course, these variable names don't make much sense here so you can rename them in the next in the next step right so of course let's say you want to work with this data frame so you can store it somewhere okay and or maybe you can write it here only right because this is nothing but a data frame right everything because this is a data frame so we can rename this in fact so let's say uh, rename them so i need to provide columns is equal to and then i need to provide all the columns I want to rename. So let's say runtime. I'll change this to average runtime. Then I'll what I'll do. I'll change the name of this revenue to um, total revenue, right? Because we're doing sum. And then uh, for IMDb ID, we need to replace by the number of movies, right? That makes more sense. So let's say num movies, something like this. Okay. And uh, okay, so let's go ahead and run this, right? So now, as you can see, so now the, uh, these variable names, they make sense, right? So in this way, you can do this in a single statement, right? Because essentially, if you look at this, right? So let's look at this particular thing. What is this? Okay. So does this even make sense or is it? So this is a, a basically group. This is data from group by object. Okay. Now on top of this, we have a function additional method which we can uh, perform so such as aggregate. Okay. So when we do aggregate, right? So this entire thing is a data frame. Okay. This is a data frame now because data frame has sort values method. So we can apply dot sort values method here and this also gives us a data frame only. So on top of this, we can uh, yeah run the rename uh, or call the rename method, right? Which will rename our columns. Does this make sense, guys? Uh, does this make sense, Rishabh? Uh, I know these are a whole lot, uh, a lot of things, but you need to understand what all these things are, right? So I that's why I'm trying to simplify for you guys, right? So here. If you look at this particular highlighted piece of uh, code, so this yields you a data frame, right? Because this is a data frame, we can call other methods on top of it, right? So that's why I'm able to write all those things in a single line, right? So here you can write sort values. And then because whatever this will generate, this will generate a data frame only. So I can call other uh, methods which are supported on a pandas data frame, right? So here I chose to use the rename method. So I can in fact, yeah, call the rename method and yeah, this will uh, serve my purpose. Okay. So this is what I wanted to discuss with you guys uh, in relation to the group by operations. So there are in fact, a lot of things to learn. So, but at least I think you should, you should be able to understand what happened uh, in these few codes, right? So how group by work, what is the meaning of group by, uh, why do we need aggregation? What, what does that mean? And what are the different ways to aggregate? Okay, so I hope yeah, you guys were able to understand this particular bit. And so there are in fact a lot of uh, things in available in pandas and we'll be using them as and when the time and uh, time comes, right? So I can uh, uh, tell you there are a few more things. So there is, uh, I can so replace, uh, not column, but values in, right? So replace values in column pandas, right? So there is a replace method as well, right? So replace values given in to replace with value, right? So there are a lot of uh, things. And as you can see from here, so there are a lot of uh, things in uh, Panda, right? Like transform, rolling, expanding, apps, right? Correlation, right? Apply uh, that we use already, right? We used ag, but we didn't use transform. So you can go through all these different functionalities which are available, right? So not a sane person will be able to remember all these things, right? And it's not expected from a sane person to remember all those things, but you should uh, have this knack of uh, identifying what you want to do. And that is the best you can do. Once you have uh, identified that, you can simply Google or go through the yeah, documentation and just uh, copy paste a snippet from there, right? So let's say if I didn't know about uh, replace, so I can simply, yeah, use this particular code right 
so i can also understand what are different arguments from here so these things are uh, pretty straightforward right so I, I was thinking that in this class i would be able to discuss this problem statement so this will be discussing in the guided project but i'll just uh, give you the uh, heads up for that so uh, what's the problem statement so suppose you have been hired by a rookie movie producer so a movie there's a movie producer who is relatively new to the industry and he wants to produce a movie and he wants to take your help to make him uh, or make a decision for him what type of movies to produce and which actors to cast right so let's say if you are a newbie producer so you don't know which movie to make or which actors to cast right so you have to back your recommendations based on thorough analysis of the data uh, which he shared with you uh, which has the list of these 3000 movies and their corresponding details right so as a data scientist firstly you need to explore the data and check its uh, sanity right so you cannot have any gibberish uh, thing of course we have some gibberish data here but uh, those things cannot be accounted for of course or you can find some explanation at least reasonable explanations for uh, why those uh, erroneous values are there in your data right so in our guided project we'll be discussing these questions and we'll try to solve them uh, together so first question is which movie made the highest profit who were its producer and director identify the actors in that film right uh, this data has information about uh, movies made in different languages so which language has the highest average roi right so these things are really crucial for the producer to decide which movies to invest in right and the third question is find out the unique genres of movies in this data set then you can make a table of all the producers and directors of each movie and then you can find the top 3 producers which uh, who have produced movies with the highest average roi right so those can be your ideal producers right or ideal producers right and then the fifth question is which actor has acted acted in the most number of movies and then you can deep dive into the movies genres and pro, uh, profile profits corresponding to this actor right so you can do a lot of uh, different analysis and in fact we have not explored the data a lot right because if you think in a way right so so uh, we haven't explored the crew column we haven't explored the cast column which has the details of actor uh, right etc and then we didn't explore the keywords we didn't explore the spoken languages and then we didn't even explore the production countries production companies then uh, we didn't even explore the genres that would belongs to collection right so these uh, things will be uh, covering in our guided project and you will be able to understand how we can dissect such uh, complicated looking uh, data structures right so it's a list of dictionaries and that is with is within a data frame so uh, uh, in the first sight it might seem uh, a lot invincible to you right so you won't be able to tackle that this at, at all but uh, because you know how to operate with lists how you to operate with dictionaries so we'll just extend those concepts and we'll try to integrate them with our uh, understanding of pandas and how data frames work and uh, yeah we will be fine with it right so we'll be able to actually been uh, yeah we'll be able to answer all these questions which i yeah showed you guys right so uh, sorry so in fact i had the solutions to these questions but uh, i'll yeah because of yeah uh, scarcity of time so we won't be able to yeah cover this but as you can see these are quite uh, right so every value is in fact uh, quite huge right so this particular value right so this as you can see for crew and this is for the first row so what is the value for crew in the first row so as you can see here it's quite big right because the crew is large actually right so the job is producer and who is the producer wind diesel production is and who is the producer neil h mall right so they can be multiple producers right who is the writer and so there are a lot of different details which are provided here and our task in the guided project would be to answer all these questions and explore these uh, values and see how we can uh, smartly write codes and functions to get these answers okay so today we will not be having any quiz because uh, i wanted to discuss these questions and uh, wanted to you guys to yeah uh, move along with me 
but uh, yeah due to lack of time we were not able to do so but we'll yeah do this uh, on uh, saturday in the, in the guided project and tomorrow we'll have a class on introduction to data visualization so tomorrow i'll be introducing you to two uh, important libraries for visualization one is c uh, uh, and the other is matplotlib in fact i should have said in, in the other order matplotlib is the base library and c is in fact is built on top of matplotlib right so if you think about uh, what num uh, numpy is to pandas similarly matplotlib is to c in a way right and these are very good libraries and we'll be able to do a lot of very good visualizations and we'll try to include visualizations in your let's say guided project or maybe uh, you can do that in your self project too okay so yeah so that's it uh, in this class and so in this class mostly we discussed about the merge operations uh, we talked about concat method we talked about the merge method and then we talked about various type of joins and then finally we looked at various group by operation uh, operations right so that's it uh, folks and uh, yeah, so we'll meet again tomorrow. Uh, thanks everyone for joining in this uh, session. So I hope you uh, yeah got to know something substantial again today. Uh, got a lot of homework to do today. Uh, so what I'll uh, ask you guys to do in the assignment uh, to solve those three questions, right? So maybe I, I think you guys should be able to uh, at least solve these uh, first three questions on your own. Okay, so in the assignment, I had given you to yeah solve these three questions, but in fact, we'll not be able to do. So what we'll do, uh, uh, so you need to solve these questions, the first three questions, right? So come do this in assignment. In fact, I'll, I'll update the assignment too, and uh, you can do that. But of course, this is available in your material. So complete this assignment. And I, I don't want you guys to uh, yeah copy paste the solutions, right? So if, if any of the things matches, in a solution you will not be getting any credit right so try to write your own solution because this is the time you actually inspect the data and see what's happening right so what are the various values and if those values are actually meaningful at all right and you know how to google so try to use that knowledge and see if you are able to do these questions at least what i will ask you guys to solve uh, solve the first two questions right so uh, leave uh, three just do the top two questions and I think, yeah, you should be able to, uh, yeah, uh, do these three, uh, two questions. It's not that difficult, uh, but it's a little tricky. You'll have to do some set of uh, analysis. And in fact, uh, what I will do, uh, I'll in fact, uh, yeah, delete all these things. In fact, they are, you would have made a copy, so you'll obviously have the solution. But anyway, I would ask, uh, uh, yeah, encourage you guys to, uh, write a different set of code which performs the same action and i want you guys to write proper functions right proper functions they should have doc strings and uh, proper comments should be there and uh, then only you should submit the assignment right so try to solve the first two questions write your own custom functions uh, proper comments should be there and you should also include uh, your suggestions or recommendations from these two questions right so uh, change it, it for minimum profit movie. Uh, sorry, I didn't get. Uh, see, uh, can you unmute yourself and uh, let me know uh, what are you saying? Okay, so which movie made the minimum profit? You're saying? Uh, yes, yeah? in that way. Yes, yes. I was saying that. No, uh, it's essentially the same thing, right? Hmm? So, oh, you said you can also add something. Okay, okay, right. So, in like fact, a producer, director, right, right, right. exactly. So, you can ask those questions for yourself. Maybe, uh, what you can do, uh, try to yeah solve uh, and these two questions. Okay, so uh, leave the first two questions. Try to solve the last two questions okay uh, try to solve the last two questions and in the guided project we'll deal with the first four questions so i don't think this has any relation uh, to these questions uh, but uh, i think uh, uh, yeah try to solve these two uh, questions the last two questions in fact and we'll discuss four, uh, all these four questions in the guided project 
Okay, does that make sense, everyone? Right. So yeah, try to solve the last two questions, and uh, uh, we'll discuss uh, the first four questions in the guided project. Okay. So all right. So I I think yeah, this is sorted in a way. All right. Okay. So uh, thanks everyone uh, for your uh, time and uh, joining this session. So. Uh, so yeah, I'll update in no your notebooks and dashboard. But the questions you can uh, yeah definitely copy paste in your uh, assignment. Okay, so that should not be much of a concern for you, especially let's say okay I'll update this. No worries. Okay, but you can start working on it simultaneously. Okay, I don't I don't think that should be much of a problem, right? So you have to do the last two questions. Okay, so last two questions. Here, okay. So last two questions. You don't have to do the. Uh, yeah, focus on the first four. First four questions will be discussed uh, in the guided project. The last two questions you need to do complete it uh, by. Yeah, try to submit it by tomorrow. Okay. If you need some time, I can extend the deadline. But of course, your deadline is uh, before the next uh, class, right? So I think yeah, you have around uh, 22 hours with you. Try to yeah uh, complete these two questions and yeah, you should be fine. Uh, is uh, there any confusion? They are, uh, they are already in the assignment. These two questions are already uh, already in the assignment. In the assignment. Okay, okay, that's great. The... Okay, so yeah, you can just skip uh, but the, uh, the... Third question. Is... Yeah, yeah. So just skip the fourth question, okay, and try to yeah solve the. In fact, if you can do all these three, but that would be great. But I want to actually take some time to discuss all these four questions. And uh, I want you guys for today to just focus on these two questions, and uh, yeah, that should be fine. So in your assignment, you can simply drop this particular question. Okay, so you can delete those cells. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, delete that particular question, and yeah, just work on the last two questions, and yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so thanks again, everybody, uh, everyone. So it was really a great day. So I hope. You got to learn a lot of interesting stuff in uh, related to pandas, and uh, yeah, we'll meet again tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll be doing uh, some uh, yeah cooler stuff uh, related to visualization, and then we'll try to consolidate the understanding of this week in our guided and the self project. Okay, so thanks again everyone for joining in.